I'm sure when you sew, you have a lot of feelings going through your mind when you're going through the process from when you start and you feel some sort of way when you're done. <laughs> well, I'm bringing to you my 10 happiest snakes of 2022. They were the ones that made me smile, sing and just, just be really happy. I mean, I love to sew. It's something that makes me happy and it was really hard to choose the top 10. So let's see. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from liftingpinsandneedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing. And today I'm bringing you the 10 happiest makes of 2022. This is the third year I've been doing this. I just had an idea a couple of years ago and I started thinking at the start of the year, looking back, I'm not trying to be objective about this at all because feelings are quite subjective and they are my feelings they're not based on any type of scale that you can measure it's just a scale of happiness basically and what made me the happiest as a reference i sold 137 garments in 2022 which is quite a lot but remember i have a sewing channel that teaches sewing and i need to be sewing to make content right so i probably make more than a lot of people but that's fine so it was a little bit difficult to choose a top 10 because I love everything I make you know it's got my choice of fabric my custom fitting you know why wouldn't I love them <laughs> but there's always some that have something special either through the process or who it was made for or how I felt when I tried it on for the first time so I've chosen 10 and I'm not mentioning them in any particular order I really couldn't put them in an order. I mean, it was really hard to choose these 10. So let's just say they're the best 10 in no particular order. <laughs> so the first one is the Winterthur jacket from Itch to Stitch. And I made this one at the end of November. I made two versions. And the first version was purple linen lined, full on the works, like the whole thing as per the pattern. Love that one. It's not that I don't love it, but the second one made me extra happy because I just kept picturing it in my mind when I was making the first one. I knew I was going to make the second one, which was basically just simplified. It wasn't lined. It was sleeveless. It was a little shorter. It still had all the patch pockets but I knew it was something I was going to really enjoy wearing. I live in hot climate, so anything that's lighter and with no sleeves, I tend to wear the most. And the blue color and the whole process, yeah, it just made me extra, extra happy. And I just kept singing and enjoying it so much. Maybe if you repeat your makes, maybe some of you just make one and that's it. I usually make more than one out of a pattern. And the second time is always so much more enjoyable because you have the process really fresh in your mind and it's just more relaxing to just so, so, so without worrying about the steps or how to do things because you've already done it, you know? So I love that one, it's so nice. And then the second one I wanna highlight is one of the Aria shirts I made. Now, I've made seven. Let's just notice that I do really love the pattern because I have already made seven in one year. When it was released in May 2022, I made five for the pattern release, four shirts and a shirt dress. And then towards the end of the year, I made two more. I really love both of the ones I made at the end of the year. They're meant to be worn over things and it's really hard to choose between them both. Oh my gosh. Yeah, but let's just say the linen version with the burgundy <laughs> has got to be up there on the list because instead of doing a regular cuff on the short sleeve, I mimic the summer key pants that has a tulip hem on the front. I was able to create that same feature here on the cuff of that sleeve. And it was so fun. It was such a nice process. I filmed it for you and it's easier than what you think. And just knowing that I was going to have this sort of jacket for summer that you put over something with that cuff there. Oh my gosh. It was just amazing to put it together and then to put it on for the first time. And I've worn it out and it's, yeah, it made me really happy. So I couldn't leave it off the list. Even though the other jacket I made was also super, super nice. I think, yeah, this, this one tops it off. Then I have the Legato jeans from Love Notions. This was something I made at the end of September-ish. And I made two of them, but the one that was my muslin is up here on the list because it's a make I thought I'd sort of um, ruined by making a hole in the cutting process. You know when you fold your fabric and the layer underneath isn't really well placed and I'd already cut something out and there's a piece missing, you know, you know those cutting errors. Well, I had a, a hole on the front legs, both sides, and I thought that's fine, you know, this is just a test garment to see if the jeans fit. You know, they probably won't fit, but surprise, they did. 
I was really, really disappointed that I had that hole there because the jeans really fit. And I thought, you know, I could just do some tweaks on the crotch, little things in here and there, and I could get wearable jeans if I didn't have the hole. And sometimes when you think that you've lost a project because of this and that, most of the time in sewing there is a solution and I tend to find them, I look for them. I try to be really positive with sewing like that. And I figured out, you know, out of this leftover long strip of fabric I have, I could just create half of the front leg for both sides and get rid of the part that had the hole. And that's how I came up with the idea to have a seam all the way down the center of the leg. And then I added slits on the front that are so cool. I made little patch pockets on the front instead of the typical jean pocket and yeah, so nice. I mean, I love the process of having this totally ruined test garment and just, you know, letting it become what it wanted to be with all the bits of fabric I had and the ideas that came up and I just had a really great pair of jeans at the end and yeah, that, that process made me really happy to just know that there are ways you can fix things and I hope you think about that a little more before you're ready to give up on something you know just think a little bit more and there might be a way to fix there's a pattern from Pattern Emporium that is called the Sweet Cheek Sweater and just because the name is so cute I already love it <laughs> I made two of these one was more summer version and the winter version is my favorite Sweater Knit is a hound's tooth I made the bands and all the details with black and it's oversized, comfortable, so nice to wear, but also looks a bit dressy just because of that hound's tooth in there. And I wore this in the house so, so, so much when it was cold. And I was comfortable, I was warm, but also I felt that I wasn't like too dressed down, if you know what I mean. I, I, think, I thought I looked really nice around the house wearing that sweater and I loved it, I loved it. I need to make more of those. So, so nice to wear, easy to sew. And you know there's lots of options with Pattern Emporium, but that V is everything. I love that V. I would always make the V. It's so pretty. So it had to make my top 10. In July, I made the Salt Whistle Dress, which is a pattern from Love Notions, but that was designed by Kira from Island Socialist. And she created a beautiful design with a square neckline, elasticized waist, and then for a little surprise fact that you have a little scallop on the hem. You know, whether you make the peplum or the dress, you know, you have those scallops. That was really enjoyable to sew. Something you need to be really precise with and slow down a little bit. I love that. And that print, that is one of my favorite prints with the purple. I feel like a million bucks when I wear that dress and I have worn it out. I've worn it to church and yeah, I feel amazing. Love it. And I'm not, I know I'm going to make more of those because it's such a pretty design but also super comfy. Just, just yes, totally my style. And it had to come up here as one of my favorite makes of the year. Before we keep going with the other five makes that made my top 10, I wanted to let you know that the Love Notions pattern for this Friday, Feature Friday, is the Oakley Vest. I made two of these in 2020. I didn't make them as per the original that's meant to be made out of fleece, like a, a winter layer, you know. I used a burgundy rayon twill and made a sort of longer layer, like a duster. It could be a pool cover-up using the Oakley Vest pieces. <laughs> so I love that, just thinking outside the box. And I love doing different things with the patterns. And the other one I made was made with linen. And I drafted a facing for it and it's like a little sleeveless blazer doesn't have the zipper so there's a lot of things you can do with the pattern other than make it as per the pattern if you want and that pattern is only five dollars today so I'll leave you my affiliate link down below and the video I made previously about it maybe you want to make yourself a winter one or maybe a summer one like I did so I'll leave you all that information down below and let's keep going with the other five top makes now the other one I want to highlight is the Tuva Smart Cardigan slash Blazer from Sinclair Patterns. And I made this one at the beginning of the year, I think in March. I've worn it out so many times and I love it so much. I even brought it on this trip here for when it gets a little cool. And that tells you how much I love it because I barely brought any clothes. Like I'm always wearing this black tank if you've noticed. So <laughs> the print here was the thing that made me the happiest combined with the design. It is a sweat shirting material, if you want to believe that. And it's got that lace printed on the material. But when you look at it, it seems like it's a lace overlay, but it's not. It's actual sweat shirting with the lace printed on it. And it's so soft and comfortable. It's like when you're wearing sports clothes, but with a dress and heels. It looks so dressy, but it doesn't feel like that. It seems like I'm cheating, like I look too dressed up for how comfortable I feel. <laughs> 
and I use the leather look jersey here to highlight the seam here on the curved pockets and here on the cuffs and it's so beautiful and the sewing also made me happy let's just be honest the construction is really different it's very counterintuitive in the way that you think it's going to come together but it's not and I think sometimes taking on projects like this really helps you in your sewing because you might be used to sewing the same thing over and over and you sort of have some steps ingrained in your brain but then you find designs like this that are the total opposite and then you end up with something super unique and amazing so I think these types of projects definitely help you grow in your sewing. Last year for the very first time I was able to make some sports bras and I had been waiting for so long to be able to make them. I needed certain materials I couldn't source mainly power net and the right types of elastics and finally I was able to make some and out of all the ones I made I had to choose one which is a power sports bra from Green Style in a blue athletic knit and it's so pretty it fits so well it's got a D cup size which I needed to make for that bra according to my measurements and it fits amazing it feels amazing I've worn it out I've worn it to the gym I've worn it to a water park I mean it was so nice to finally be able to make a garment like this that I'd always wanted to make that I knew I could but I just hadn't been able to because of lack of supplies and that's so frustrating but the other thing that makes me happy was that I was able to get the courage and pose here for the internet so I had a lot of internal conflict about that you know I'm not someone that poses in bikinis I don't wear bikinis I've never worn them it's it's not part of my culture here in Chile at least when I grew up like no one wears bikinis around here and yeah, now I think the younger generation do, but at least when I was growing up, no, everyone was in one-piece suits. Showing my midriff for me is just not something I'll do really easily. And I didn't really show you much. I showed you just the bra, but at least I was able to get the courage to show you how it fit and motivate you to sew something like this. You know, I, I thought a flat lay was going to be really underwhelming. I thought I was sort of tastefully covered. I wasn't showing anything. <laughs> You know, it's not like an actual bra bra, it's a sports bra, no lace, no transparency. So I'm so happy I was able to share that with you. It made me feel good. And you know, if I make some more sports bras, I'll pose, you know, I think that's cool. So I hope you enjoyed that because it was really hard to do. It took a lot of courage, but then I was really proud of myself for doing it. Power sports bra, great pattern from Green Style. <laughs> The next one is the Jenny crossover top from 5 out of 4 and I made this one at the beginning of 2022 and it looked harder than it was. You know, sometimes you see line art and pictures and you think, oh, that looks hard, you know, it's got two layers on the front. But it was so easy to put together. The band here was so easy to sew. I mean, it was so enjoyable. It's got dolman sleeves. So if you want to make it short sleeve, you just hem that and it's really a really nice length, a really good fit. If you want it long sleeve you just add to that with another piece and yeah I made a summer one I made a winter one but my winter version is my favorite it's so so cute <laughs> purple background sweater knit with white polka dots similar to the sweet cheek sweater where I wore it in the house in the winter and I felt so put together in the house like I was being really cute in the house but also really warm and comfy <laughs> so it was the best of both worlds and I really really enjoyed it I think it's a really cute pattern really accessible if you're newer to sewing you know you can make something really cute like that and really enjoy it and it's not a basic knit make so yeah I've got to put it here because I really really loved sewing it wearing it uh, the style the fabric everything just came together uh, to make something that is really up my street <laughs> the next one is something I didn't make for myself I made for my mum so that already puts it way up there I have very few opportunities to sew for my mum and every time I do it's a real treat for me you know if you know my sewing story I started sewing as a child and I made the very first garments for my mum I made so many of her clothes when I was in my teens blazers dresses pants you name it I made it for her and that was easy because I was living, you know, in my parents' house. I was a teenager, right? But since we've been apart, it's just been really, really hard. And I need to have her there. I need to fit her. I can't make things long distance just hoping they'll fit, you know? I, I don't do that. So this moss jacket from Helen's Closet is something that she loves so, so much. She's requested I make her another one. She wants a white linen one. The one I made her was a royal blue. She chose it from my linen stash. And I bound all the seams inside with this really pretty cotton and I went full on 
pulled all the stops to make her the most amazing jacket. It's really casual and she dresses really casual. She's always in jeans and loafers with her little jacket. She looks so cute and she loves it so much. So seeing her enjoy it so much makes me happy and just having the opportunity to make it for her made me really happy. So it had to make my list. <laughs> it's a really nice pattern, you know, really easy to sew. I think linen is the best fabric for it because it's a simple design and linen always looks so nice with simple designs like that. It's almost sunset. <laughs> The last one I wanted to mention is the Brisbane dress from Itch to Stitch. Such a beautiful style, oh my gosh, that neckline is so beautiful. It's a type of dress I love to wear the most, which it's not a bodycon dress at all, but it's sort of more fitted than other dresses. It's not a fit and flare because the skirt is just lightly A-lined, you know, it's not straight straight. And I just love that neckline, that yoke on the top that's lined. The sewing technique is always really surprising. Kenneth designs amazing shapes that look good on everyone and fit amazing. But what's also amazing is the sewing techniques because they're not always the same. And I love sewing things that are not the same. I love stopping and reading and seeing why things are done this way. And definitely this is a pattern brand that's helped me grow in my sewing as well. No matter how long you've been sewing, you'll never stop learning. You always find new ways to do things. And that's what I experience when I sew each to stitch. I just always enjoy it and always really happy with the professional results you get inside. And yeah, love that dress. Out of the three I made, the one with the stripes, flowers yeah that's my favorite one so beautiful i'd really love to know what was your favorite make or your favorite happiest makes out of 2022 i always enjoy hearing from you and i reply in your comments so really 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 keen to see what you made and you love the most sometimes we can suffer a little bit you know but let's try to be positive let's think that sewing is just putting pieces of fabric together you know if we make a mistake it's only fabric you know we're not working in hospitals with human lives you know like my other job that was stressful as a midwife oh my gosh but now you know if you have hiccups along the way just think that there are ways sometimes that you might be able to fix these things i'm finding this continually in my sewing and every time i'm able to salvage something you know it just makes me feel really really happy even happier than when everything goes straight to plan you know so that's the end of the video now if you want to hear a little bit more about what's going on you can stay with me for a little bit longer just like a minute if you're interested about what i'm doing so if you know I've been traveling I left my home the 29th of November I've been at my parents house at this moment I'm at my in-laws house which is in a really far away city from my parents so I'm in a different backyard in the middle of a city so you might hear noise cars dogs and stuff I have no sewing machine no sewing room absolutely nothing to do any sewing with here in this place so it'll be impossible to get any sewing done. January is always a, a bit of a challenging month for that but I hope you still support the channel. <laughs> it's just hard to make sewing content when you can't sew right and I'm not really that good at making talking videos about sewing like this one. I do do them occasionally but it's just harder for me to do than to present actual sewing you know because that's the, the main content in the channel you know it's about sewing but I will catch up by the end of the month I'll be home the 20th I'll still try to make some content once I get there a little bit more condensed I suppose and I'm aiming to have about eight videos for you this month although at the beginning of the month it'll be a bit you know far in between I do have a really really cool pattern I made at my mum's that I'm creating a video for that I'll film here at my in-laws so expect that expect a few surprises so that's all from me. I hope you're having a wonderful start of the year and I'll see you soon. Bye.